Hello and welcome to The Print. I am Snehish Alex Philip. Uh, I have with me a very interesting guest here. As you would all know, he is Sonam Wangchuk. Uh, he is an innovator, engineer, uh, education reformer. And he is based out of uh, Ladakh. Now, you know, people who, who don't know him, which I am sure there are very few who would probably not know him, uh, should watch uh, the movie Three Idiots. Because Three Idiots is what really made him famous. Because Amir Khan plays his role, as in his in the real life. Uh, so welcome to the print, sir. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm I'm happy to meet you. It's a it's an honor for me. But at the same time, I'm also sad uh, meeting you at this particular uh, point of time. Uh, this is because uh, from day after tomorrow, which is which is uh, Saturday. You are going on a hunger strike in Ladakh, in Leh specifically. Why are you doing this? What is the issue that is forcing for someone like you, you know, that the country looks up to, to do this? Thank you very much. I'm happy to meet you and the viewers. Um, yes, many of you may see me for the first time, but many may see me for the last time also. Because uh, this fast that I am going to take up is uh, three weeks and possibly indefinite, as they call Amar and Anshan. Uh, why is it? I call it climate fast to safeguard the mountains of the Himalayas, particularly Ladakh in our case, from indiscriminate exploitation, mining, which has caused havoc in Uttarakhand, Himachal, all the way to Sikkim. And that's going to come to Ladakh. Now, in Ladakh, we are trying to do everything that is possible to safeguard these mountains. There are various tools and provisions in different parts of the country. But in the region of Ladakh, where indigenous tribal communities are the majority, 90%, 97% of the population are uh, tribal people. There is a very special provision in the Indian constitution that is called the sixth schedule of yeah. the article 244 which gives safeguards to these regions the people and their cultures by giving them a provision where they can determine how these places should be developed without interference from others so uh, this is what ladakh has been um, demanding for a long time before it was made into a UT. We are very grateful and very happy that Ladakh became a UT in 2019. And but not part of the larger Jammu and Kashmir yes, state. That was a demand for 70 years yeah. to become its own. It used to be a kingdom yeah. you know, in the past. Now it at least deserves to be its own uh, entity, which happened in 2019. So now the problem was that there are no safeguards to the, these hilly regions like in Article 370 there were and people took it for granted that of course we have six schedule in the constitution and sure it's for places like Ladakh, 97% tribal, who better to deserve this? That was our hope and this hope crystallized into um, almost certainty when the government also as generously as it gave UT status to Ladakh promised that uh, Ladakh will be safeguarded under six schedule. There were mega gatherings where union ministers uh, gave their word and not just word, it's written in various minutes of uh, SCST commission I can share with you. Yeah. Then it was put in their manifestos. The ruling party had six schedule safeguards for Ladakh as the number one, two, three of their manifesto, two elections, and they won heavily. And after that, things changed and they started backtracking on it. Now, that's what brings us to, uh, you know, assert. Uh, and say that you've made a promise, you better keep it. So, you know, generally for our viewers, what is so concerning or what is happening in Ladakh, which is so concerning that you want uh, this particular article being brought in? 
what mm. is happening in mm. Ladakh? Why are you so concerned? Okay. Me personally, I'm an environmentalist. I'm very concerned about the fragile, sensitive ecosystem of the high Himalayas with its glaciers and fragile flora fauna. You know, Ladakh and the Himalayan glacial system is called the third pole of the planet. Yes. It feeds 2 billion people directly or indirectly, 1 billion on the Indian subcontinent. That's one fourth of the world's population. If we do indiscriminate mining industries in these areas, not only will local people suffer because these glaciers will go much faster, but entire North Indian uh, plains will suffer with shortage of water. So it is critical that we safeguard these fragile regions as sacred zones of source of water. Yeah? And that's why we consider it very important uh, to preserve these as an environmentalist. For the local people, it's about protecting their culture, their customs, their land, which is all in the sixth schedule of the constitution, as our forefathers put it 75 years ago. Now, the beauty of Indian constitution is that it not only tolerates diversity, it actually encourages and protects diversity. And Sikh Schedule is an example of that. The world respects us for, for this kind of provision. And if we backtrack on promises the government made, then it's a problem. It's not just a problem, again, it's a problem for me as an environmentalist. It's a problem for the people of Ladakh, for their culture and custom and environment. It's a problem for the whole nation of uh, trust and ethics. If a party promises in written, in elections and wins them and then says we don't care, it should be a problem for everybody. It's like giving a check and then the check bounces and then you say we don't care. So it's a, it's a very important statement. It's a precedence. What happens to Ladakh with this promise will become a precedence for the rest of India in all elections to come, whether leaders can just say anything and don't care about it later, or Ladakh becomes a case in point that they tried, but people stood up, they came out to lay their lives, and finally the government was made to keep its promise. Then future leaders either will not make promises that they can't fulfill, or will fulfill the promises that and they if, make. It's also a, a issue of uh, ethics. Sir, the, uh, you know, from the reports that is coming in from, uh, from Ladakh, uh, there are about 40,000 uh, Ladakhis who uh, plan to take part in this protest in, in Leh. So, you know, when we talk about Ladakh, you know, I've been to Ladakh multiple times. Uh, you know, Ladakh for me is so beautiful. Is picturesque. Of course, there is there is a lot of development that needs to happen, and there is development that is taking place. But uh, why do you fear, uh, you know, that the Ladakhi culture will not be protected? Uh, is it because you fear uh, that outsiders will come in? You also spoke about mining. You spoke mm -hmm. about environment. Uh, what is happening on that front, sir? That makes yeah. you so concerning. Yeah. First of all, the thing that you said, roughly 40,000 people will gather. That's 3rd of February yeah. mm, tomorrow. Um, that's historic. Never ever happened in Ladakh. Maybe 40, maybe more. It's in a place that's hardly 200,000 people. Like a third of the population will be gathering in a place to tell the government how seriously we are for these safeguards. Because there has been um, these confusions created by seemingly industrial lobby with some local leaders to say that Ladakhi people don't want it. It's just few people who are shouting this. So people are reacting in so strongly that they're coming physically, voting with their feet to come to the historic polo ground of Leh, gather in such large numbers and sign it for the government to take notice. Now, why is it important, hmm? is what you yeah. are asking. Like, if Ladakh is left free for all, hmm? no safeguards, nothing, 
there'll be mining companies coming and we hear they are scouting the mountains and valleys. There will be huge hotel chains coming. Each of these will bring lakhs of people. And the dry desert eco ecology of Ladakh is very fragile. It's not possible for you to imagine from Delhi or Lucknow or Chennai what it is. It's a very intricate uh, system where people have to make do with 5 liters of water a day. 5 liters, not 150 like you do in Delhi. Now imagine 150 liter wala, <laughs> 200,000 of them come, there will be no water for anybody. It will be spoiled for them and for the locals forever. So that's what people fear that this is a very different game. Here every drop of water is important. I'm just taking one yeah. thing as an yeah. example and it cannot support large numbers. Even tourism itself has caused so much havoc because it cannot support. Now imagine permanently if there are large populations, then it will make refugees out of locals. But even for those who come, it will not be any uh, worthy place to live. So that's why people fear what will happen to our land, our ecology, our culture. A culture that is fine-tuned over tens of thousands of years to survive in these mountains will be disrupted and diluted and therefore it will not be possible yeah, to sustain. So that, that, that is as far as the fear of larger number of tourists mm. are concerned. No, so, no. Tourists and influx of uh, people for industries, for all kinds of for, things. It's just not, uh, what do you call the... Uh, Capacity, the carrying capacity of the region is not such like Lucknow or Chandigarh. I mean, absolutely, I get your point on that. But when it when it comes to you know uh, the mining that you mentioned, mm. uh, the the tourism and other industry that will mm. come into Ladakh, because the government mm. is trying to attract investments into mm. Ladakh. Mm. But the investments will eventually help the local people, is what mm. the government would say, mm. right? Uh, for example, uh, yeah, yeah. let's talk about. You know, uh, states like Chhattisgarh and Jharkhand. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, uh, you know, you have a whole left wing extremism, Maoism mm -hmm. that is there. The fight is on, mm -hmm. but uh, but then the fact is that this, these are the states which which are rich in natural resources, mm -hmm. and for any country to progress, natural resources are important. So the government will always say that uh, mm -hmm. you know whatever mining has been done, it's mm -hmm. been done mm -hmm. based on you know, yeah, yeah. study, yeah, environment yeah. study mm. and things mm. like that. And mm. the companies would claim that so. Mm. So what is it that you want? You don't want these people to come in. You don't want mm. tourists to come in. You don't want industries no. to come up. Two things. Mm. One is that we should not, not only in Ladakh, all over the Himalayas, which are so sensitive, we should not do things for just this generation. And that too, few people, few rich, wealthy, powerful people, industrial houses, in this generation, in a way that future generations are left to bear the consequences and that will be local people. It's so sensitive that if you exploit in the name of profit and growth, there will be nothing left. Actually, the nation will pay huge prices right in this or next generation like you can see in Himachal, in Uttarakhand, a blind, indiscriminate development is causing so much havoc. I don't know whether there are benefits or there is actually a drain of the national exchequer. That's uh, the main uh, reason okay. why people don't want such uh, industry blindly to come. Secondly, they are not also against development, people of Ladakh. All that six schedule says is that you can develop but it will be in consultation with the local indigenous people. So Sikh schedule doesn't stop development. Sikh schedule gives the decision to the local indigenous people by forming councils, elected representatives councils. These councils have powers for legislation. What they decide becomes law and that way they can be discerning what to allow, what not to allow. And you can imagine people who are from the place will be more concerned about how to develop the place rather than a person who just comes for three years 
like now uh, we are under you know governor's rule as a ut without legislature we are under permanent governor's rule so the second issue that we'll be uh, doing this fast is restoration of democracy how can ladakh in whole of india the mother of democracy how can this important strategic place called the forehead uh, crown of india true be left without democracy right now there is no democracy in ladakh there's just one member of parliament who doesn't have uh, much role to play in ladakh in the national parliament yes but within ladakh it's a lieutenant governor with all due respect some lgs are very good but some can be very bad and they come for just 3 years and they don't care what the consequences will be it's the people of ladakh who will have to bear the consequences of mistakes that a man or woman does maybe they'll favor some industries maybe they'll do something unfair but if it is a local he or she has to think of the consequences we say always look at generations in ladakh there is a saying mm. look at the future generations how your deci- decision impacts now somebody who comes for 3 years is not going to do that so that's why ladakh is saying restore democracy in ladakh give ladakh its assembly ut with legislature or full statehood one of them ladakh deserves, deserves. if kashmir does why not ladakh and then at the grassroots hill councils with power to legislate currently so there hill, are hill councils I'll, I'll, yeah currently there are hill councils without power for legislation they are like toothless hill councils now it's also not i must clarify about outsiders and ladakhis it's not about that also for example you must have heard of the pangong lake yeah somoreri lake yeah these are very fragile very sensitive ecosystems with some of the rarest birds and flora and fauna hmm? it's as much in danger of ladakhi people as of people from delhi or bombay yeah. so why not protect it from people from lay city also six schedule gives them that the local changpa population which is a distinct tribe will have say on those regions not people from lay so it protects and i like that that it's not about people from delhi outside inside it's the ladakhi people from other than that sensitive lake area who will not be allowed to plunder that place this six schedule will give right to the local people of that region to protect it from people in lay city like me i have no right to plunder that area because i'll not take care of its future the people will similarly we have this aryan valley yeah very special indigenous tribe now we they need to be protected from people in lay so it's about safeguarding whoever is in which region uh, from the rest not about inside outside see you know uh, uh, that's a very good point that you mentioned you know the fact is that it's the locals and not necessarily when you say by locals it doesn't mean people from lay mm. you know the actual local mm. uh, the tribe or yes. the people there who will decide the future uh you've t- spoken about democracy you know uh, about the fact that ladakh needs democracy you've spoken about a uh, ut uh, with, with legislative. a legislation uh, legislative assembly just like maybe puducherry or how it is here pondicherry and uh, delhi and delhi or statehood or statehood is what you're seeking but then ladakh you know uh, is all is also very strategically placed you know it's it's a it's a right now it's a union territory which is seeing a lot of military build up you know you have uh, china you know trying to mm-hmm. take over ladakh mm-hmm. uh, you have the indian uh, army the air force who are deployed there mm-hmm. uh, for defensive and as well as for offensive mm-hmm. capabilities so one would always the state the center would always say that uh, boss we can't mm-hmm. give you Mm-hmm. uh full freedom because as mm-hmm. you said this is india's forehead mm-hmm. so they need to have a say in this as well okay. so how do you mm-hmm. reconcile to that yes yes all the more reasons especially with china right next all the more reasons to give full autonomy democracy to ladakh and show to the world that this is a region that manages itself while being right across the border it is not abnormal it is not disputed 
you know, it's like any other part of that's the daring bold move that India should. Otherwise, by making it a UT without legislation, you are in a way distrusting the people of Ladakh. Yeah? And uh, these are people, I could tell you, any day, people in Ladakh are more patriotic than, I would say, in New Delhi. Yeah? Because I have seen it in all the wars. By the way, all the wars that India fought were fought in Ladakh. And each of the war, not only Ladakhi soldiers fought, but civilians without a penny, voluntarily went shoulder to shoulder with the soldiers, carrying food and clothing for them. You're talking of this place and insulting with them with distrust that you can't manage it. Another point, these UTs without legislature, like Lakshadweep, like Goa, Daman Diu, they yeah. were, Daman Diu, yeah. these didn't have or don't have legislature. But these were special regions that were acquired from other foreign powers, like uh, Lakshadweep from Portuguese yeah. and yeah. so on. Yeah? yeah. So in a way, you are saying that Ladakh is not really Indian, like Goa, Daman, Diu were not, they were acquired. So you are saying it's not really ours, so we want to control. In other words, you are saying it's actually Chinese and we are now controlling. And therefore, we won't give it demo democracy. So you're weakening your own argument of Ladakh being proudly part of India. You're saying we, there is a dispute about Ladakh. It's a very wrong statement on the international platform to give uh, by not having democracy in Ladakh. No, I completely, uh, uh, I'll again agree with you on this. But uh, just the fact that you mentioned that uh, Ladakhi uh, Ladakhis are more patriotic than, let's say, someone in Delhi. Yeah, I, I would I would say uh, you know Delhiites or any anybody else or Ladakhis are as patriotic as a true patriot should be. You know, and and mm. yes, there are uh, you know the Ladakhis uh, stand out when it comes to stories stories of valor and bravery uh, for how you know they fought uh, with the Indian Army. Uh, but also uh, fought as civilians too. Forget fighting, mm -hmm. forget being part of the mm -hmm. the military and fighting it. But as civilians also... The you should watch the movie Hakikat from yes. 1962 to yes. understand what Ladakhis are. Well, there you go. You have a, you know, if you, you should watch Three Idiots and also the movie Hakikat to watch it. But sir, my producer is telling me that we are running short of time. Mm -hmm. uh, so wrapping this up, what if you could count, what are your main demands? Okay, um, what I see most important yeah. are uh, safeguarding of the mountain region of Ladakh under the provision that's there, six schedule, restoring democracy in, in uh, Ladakh region. And restoring democracy means having elections, having a legislative assembly. assembly. Even though... Preferably as a state. Preferably mm -hmm. as a state, but you're also okay mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. a union territory with an mm -hmm. assembly. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Personally... My demands are not just from the government. To protect the Himalayas and our glaciers, my demands are not just from the government. That would be unfair. Yeah? Uh, from the government, these constitutional provisions. I have a demand from the people, your weavers also. They contribute as much to the destruction of glaciers of Ladakh. Yeah? I demand that you all live sensible, simpler lives or lifestyles in the big cities of the country and the world. It's your lifestyle and uh, indiscriminate consumption that's causing so much emission. That's melting our glaciers. We'll be the first victims and become climate refugees. Soon it will be your turn. So there, I don't always differ with the government. Huh? While we want the government to fulfill its promises, I want to appeal to Modi ji to fulfill their promises and show to the nation that your promises have some weight the manifestos, yeah. because otherwise nobody will trust your manifestos in this election. So, but then I am very much with Modi ji when it comes to environment, yeah. the mission life, you know, lifestyle for environment that he has launched is a global example of India becoming a Vishwaguru, showing the way to the world, change your lifestyle, live in harmony with nature. I'm all for that. And I demand that people of India support this in India at least, then the world will follow. So on environment, I'm very much with them. I want, I demand from the people. 
on safeguards i demand from the government and i demand from all of you i'm just using this word demand that you all have a moral obligation to support ladakh because we are only seeking justice for a promise that needs to be fulfilled hmm? the check that we got should not go bounced and scot free uh, that's what we are seeking and we seek support during the coming days when i'll be on 3 weeks of hunger you doing Possible. one week in ladakh ha ah, yes i'll be doing one week in ladakh and two weeks in delhi uh, okay. at jantar mantar not just me whole lot of people from ladakh will join me in this fast to make sure that our nation walks the path of ethics that no leaders make promises they can't keep and the promises they keep they make are kept this is what we would like the world to know india as no sadly you know we are all used to politicians making big uh, promises during election time and then forgetting about it but yeah. you want that to change Yes you because because we be say politicians yeah. we say politicians always do there has to be a stop to this otherwise True. when leaders lead people follow you and me will make promises make checks and cheat people so the biggest shortage in india right now is not oil or steel or anything it's trust the deficit of trust and it starts with our leaders and we are going to make sure that our leaders deliver the promises they made in 2019 with us well thank you so much sir for uh, speaking to the print and i wish you all the best and uh, viewers as he mentioned you know uh, it's not a demand only from the government it's also a demand to you so the next time you travel to forget ladakh or any place you know make sure that you don't you know we've seen these videos of thars being driven in the you know the the in the lakes of ladakh don't do that and don't litter you know keep a handbag with you dump your plastic and other things into your handbag and take it back and dump it into the hotel uh, you know the dustbin rather than just throwing it all around and in delhi also in and your in delhi also in, yes, in exactly. your delhi in my ladakh you do these things in your delhi your meaning the yes, city of delhi absolutely. it's mine as much but i Or use bombay suraj yes, wherever yeah. i use metro i came and i'll be going by metro not by a big car why can't you you have such a beautiful metro system my heart cries to see that it's seen as something that you are compelled to use not a something you are proud option. to use yeah. yes okay. i'm so proud of delhi metro well there you go but uh, thank you so much sir for speaking to the print and uh, i wish you all the best for the road ahead sir Thank, thank you. you thank you thank you very much for all your support